Let's talk about dyslipidemia. It is a disorder in which someone has an abnormal amount of cholesterol in their blood. And cholesterol is the fatty substance necessary for the proper functioning of the body. It is produced in the liver, but because lipids are hydrophobic and insoluble in water, they are unable to move in the blood and will require the help of transport. That is why we need lipoproteins, which are the transport vehicle for moving the insoluble lipid around the body. These proteins will help move the cholesterol out of the liver and the small intestines into the bloodstream. These lipoproteins can be divided into four main categories based on their density. First, we have the chylomicrons. Second, very low density lipoproteins, low density lipoproteins, and finally, high density lipoproteins. So, dyslipidemia can come in many forms, but the main observed abnormalities are first, low levels of HDL or the good cholesterols because HDL reverses cholesterol transport by removing excess cholesterol from the peripheral tissues and transport it back to the liver. Second, we have high level of LDLs or the bad cholesterols. Now, high amount of LDLs can be harmful because these lipids can build up and adhere to the innermost layer of the artery wall and restrict the blood flow, which in turn creates significant risk for heart attacks and strokes. And third, we have high levels of triacylglycerides. Now, people with dyslipidemia usually do not experience symptoms for many years, but it can lead to different vascular diseases and complications. Now, the causes can be primary or secondary. For the primary, the person is experiencing severe alleviation of cholesterol levels because of genetic defects. But in the secondary causes, it can be secondary to some conditions like obesity, hypothyroidism, kidney diseases, or to some drugs like steroids, contraceptives, and some antipsychotics. So, now how do we manage dyslipidemia? First, we have to consider the non-pharmacological option. A person must obtain a healthy diet that is rich in fruit, vegetables, and fibers, and limit the intake of saturated and trans fats. Also, we must encourage weight reduction, smoking cessation, and increasing the physical activity. Now, for the pharmacological options, we have six classes of medications, and each medication has a different mechanism of action. First, we will talk about statins, like atorvastatin, fluvastatins, and simvastatins. They work by inhibiting HMG coenzyme A reductase, which is the rate-limiting step in cholesterol biosynthesis, thereby reducing the LDL levels. Now, it's important to know that statins are considered the most potent total and LDL cholesterol-lowering agents. One of the most common side effects with statins is myopathy. But why? Well, it has been proven in in vitro and in vivo studies that statins can trigger skeletal muscle cell apoptosis. Another side effect is the increase in liver enzymes. Second, we have fibrates like phenofibrates and gemifiprozol. They work by increasing lipoprotein lipase activity, leading to significant decrease in triacylglycerides. But how? Well, by activating the gene transcription factor, PPARS, which regulate and control the lipoprotein metabolism. Side effects can include dyspepsia, increase in liver enzymes, and rhinitis. Third medication class is nicotinic acid that include niacin, which works by decreasing VLDL synthesis from the liver and increasing HDL level by inhibiting its catabolism. Side effects include flushing, pruritus, orthostatic hypotension, hyperuricemia, and nausea and vomiting. Then we have the bile acid sequestrants like cholestramine. It binds with bile acids in the intestine to form a complex that is not absorbed by the intestine, and it will be excreted in the feces. That is why it may cause constipation, dyspepsia, and bloating. The fifth class is the cholesterol absorption inhibitors, like azetamide. Well, as the name implies, it inhibits the absorption of cholesterol. It might cause diarrhea and upper respiratory tract infection. Now, the last group is the PCSK9 inhibitors, like evolocumab and alirocumab. 
The LDL receptors help clear the LDL particles from the blood. But the PCSK9 is an enzyme produced in the liver that binds and breaks down the LDL receptors in the liver cells, leading to higher levels of LDL. By inhibiting it, we will have more LDL receptors and less cholesterol in their blood. Side effects include upper respiratory tract infection, injection site reaction, and influenza. And that's it for this lipidemia. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and check out the channel's blog for more information.